everybody. Um, today's pattern is called Bird's Border by come on, by Eliz Elspeth Allen. And it's uh, inspired by the tangle pattern uh, Birds on a Wire. And you can look that one up if you want. Um, she shows her step outs as having, starting with an alternating dot grid, <clears throat> which is doing dots and then putting the next row of dots offset so that this one is in the middle of between those two and then so forth. I hope you got that. Sort of a polka dot kind of pattern, an alternating dot grid. Um, I'm not sure that I actually am going to use that. Um, I may use just dots here should tell me where this should connect. And then you do <clears throat> up to that dot and then back down, and then up to that dot and back down, and up to that dot and back down. And then on this side, you do the same sort of upside down. Oop, you can't see that. Upside down. And then step four is to draw a little swirl at the top and at the bottom going the other way. And if you're having troubles with either of these swirls, either doing the swirl this way or doing the swirl this way, just turn your page around. <clears throat> and then in the middle, do a little aura with a dot in the middle. So here's her, her sample. There's, there's the finished product here. Here's her sample. And she's calling it a bird's border. Um, <coughs> which I find interesting because the sample isn't doing it as a border. But whatever. Um, I wonder if I should do it in a square like a border. That might be interesting. Let's see what I can do with that. So I'm going to bring it in so I have plenty of room to work because I'll need a, a room for the swoop and a little swirl. So I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to do, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to draw myself a little square way inside this square. That's going to be my guideline as to where to put my birds. Something like that. Okay, give myself a, a guideline. So I am going to start here and I'm going to go up and down and then I'm going to go up and down and up and down to the corner and then opposite and then these ones go this way Like that. And then I'm going to do it over here. Oh, sorry about that. Apparently, some exciting thing is happening. I'm not sure what, but. about this corner here. I did some sort of thing there which I will have to remedy. Okay, 
so this one comes up and it's going to go around like that and this one's going to come and go down like that and I'm going to try to figure out how to do them going the other way too without interfering in, in here so something like that Okay, and then my swirls are going to come up and around. Up and around. Up and around. And down and around. And up and around. You'll notice over here I didn't like where I stopped and started. I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Oh, too far. Come on. Focus. See this spot right there? You can see where I started. Oh, goodness. I forgot to turn off the phone. Okay. This is where I started. Um, I don't like that. So... I'm following this curve around like that. See what I'm doing? I'm, I'm taking my pen, I'm following that curve and then I'm setting down my pen and I'm getting less of a blob there. I like that better. But I ended up with this blob over here in the corner. So I'm going to have to do something here in the corner. And I'm going to have to do it in all four corners. Okay, so this has to come down and go this way. So come down. I'm trying to not hit that one. Ooh, this one's going to be a challenge to not hit it. Okay. So... I have an issue here in this corner, so I'm going to have to come up. Maybe I'll come up and do... some sort of spirally thing in the corner. I'll do that in all of them. One, two, three. And around and do one. Two, three. Come around and do one, two, and three. There. Now I've got my corners similar. They're not perfect, but they're similar. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do that middle part. Now that I've got them done all the way around. And I probably should go ahead and just erase my pencil. And yes, I use an eraser, and yes, I use pencil guidelines because I have said it more than once. I am not doing Zentangle. I'm doing Tangle Patterns. It's just patterning. Sometimes they're more Zen than others, but that's not the point of this channel. It's not what I do. I am not doing Zentangle. I'm on, I am not a CZT. I am doing pattern. So we're going to follow this and put a dot in the middle.
So you guys might want to know, yes, we had a lovely time in San Diego. Or not San Diego. We go to San Diego. We went to Palm Springs. What am I talking about? Oh my goodness. Uh, it's been a long weekend. We had fun. We rented a house instead of staying at a hotel, which was so much nicer. Um, with seven of us that came out economically better. But it was also nice to everybody be all kind of hanging out together. We didn't have to like all sit in somebody's hotel room on the bed. Um, if we wanted to sit and watch TV together, we could just do it in the main room. That was delightful. Had a hot tub there. It was private. It was, it was fabulous. Um, my husband managed to ride approximately just a little over 50 miles. He was trying to do 100, but like I'd said before, he'd had a cold a whole week before we went. And I thought it was pretty amazing that he went at all. So, you know, kudos to him. I'm, I am his, I am his number one fan. Um, and our friends, uh, made it a little bit further than that. Uh, two of them went a little over 60 miles. And then, um, our Energizer bunny friend, she took the long route and she went 94 or 97 miles. Anyway, she's awesome. Um, they couldn't go the whole 100-mile route because of the uh, the weather the day before um, was really, really bad. And um, some of the roads had washed out where the, the route was supposed to go. So they rerouted them onto the 50-mile route for a good portion of it. And so that really cut out a number of miles so they couldn't... They couldn't get a full 100 miles in, but she got darned close. Between the the detours and stuff, she got darn close. So kudos to her, too. And uh, she's somewhat of a local celebrity when she goes on these bike rides because she rides with her dog in a backpack. And it's the funniest thing to see. Cutest little dog and that dog just loves to ride she like at the house if if you move her backpack even if you're not going if she even if uh my friend is not going on a ride with her if she just moves the backpack dog thinks they're going on a ride and she jumps into the pack and just sits there and going come on let's go i want to go for a ride she is hilarious so yep, she she rode that whole way with a dog on her back, which makes it even more astounding her accomplishment, I think. I like that. I want I want some curls though. So, we had a good time. It didn't it didn't rain on uh Saturday. Rained really hard on Friday. And it was raining when we left on Sunday. But it was nice for the ride on Saturday, so that was good. And, um, and it was good that we, that we follow along because, you know, my husband called. He didn't quite make it. He was about three miles, three or four miles short of... Well, the rest stopped when he just, he couldn't go anymore. So we had to go rescue him. And yes, these organized rides have what they call SAG vehicles that go around the course and picking up riders who uh, can't go any further. But, you know, you have to sit around and wait for them. And yeah, it's, it's an issue sometimes um not a bad thing but you know it's nice to have your own personal car that you can call and say come get me and then um it was a good thing we 
We actually had two vehicles this time because we had so many people. We had seven of us, so couldn't all fit into one vehicle anyway. And it was a good thing we had our own personal SAG because um, there was a uh, there was a quite a bit of wind, um, and one of the bike riders had actually flagged down. Um, our friends and you know said you know my friend says you know do, do you need help you look like you need help and the, the wife wasn't too sure if she should say anything or not and and she says well my husband fell and um, we're waiting for the SAG vehicle um, we we'd called the paramedics but he didn't want to be transported to the hospital and have a, a, an ambulance bill. So they were waiting for the SAG vehicle to come. Ooh, skies had just opened up. They were waiting for the SAG vehicle to come pick them up and take them to the, to the SAG stop. And then I don't know what they do, um, how, to, how they would transport from the SAG stop to uh, the hospital or back to their hotel uh, or back to the start line. I don't know what they were going to, the, the plan for the SAG vehicles are. So um, I stayed with one vehicle and, and stayed with our group that was pedaling and our other vehicle went back, picked them up, took them to the hotel got their gear stowed in their vehicle and um, you know the husband he was in he was in bad shape and we got a text from them later in the evening that uh, he had ended up with three broken ribs and a bruised lung and they were waiting for the results from the MRI to check on his head because he'd also hit his head so, I mean, he was in pretty serious condition. It was so good that we were able to help out um, the other guy who drives the SAG, our personal SAG vehicle. Um, he, he's just a sweetheart. And, you know, if he sees a bicyclist on the side of the road, sometimes you see them, you know, they're fixing their tires and whatever. And a lot of times you'll just drive by because they, they look like they know what they're doing there. You know, they seem to be cool. And then if he sees somebody who appears to either not be knowing how to, to fix it, fix their bike, or they seem to be struggling in some way, or they, something doesn't seem quite right to him, he will pull over and he'll ask him, you know, are you okay? Do you need help? He's awesome. He is absolutely awesome. I don't know how to help, but I do know how to drive. So that's what I do. That's how I, and I take pictures. I take lots and lots of pictures. Um, got home and took all my pictures off my camera and I had 1,700 pictures from the, from the two days. Most of them done on Saturday. I just stick my camera on sports mode and I just go for it and I take tons of pictures and then I you know delete the ones that are no good I take a lot of pictures of knees and elbows and and just you know as they're as they're driving past me I whiz around and I end up with a lot of ground and bushes and blurry stuff and I get rid of those but you know I got some awesome pictures too and I I use my creative side that way by just um, you know following along and taking pictures and documenting our day Oh, my friends appreciate that. I like that. Oh, it's getting so dark in here. I'm feeling like I need to do it around the outside or part of the outside too. Like right here. No, I just thought of something even better. 
<coughs> I know what I want to do. Ah. Okay. That's the other thing. If you decide that that's not the right thing for you when you're shading, erase it. It's okay. You can do that. I want to make these with a drop shadow. How do you do that? You just, just barely, I don't know if you can see it even, just barely putting some pencil out here. Just a little tiny bit. And what that will do, once I use my tiny blending stump and, and blend that out what it will do it will create the illusion that these little swirly bits are sticking up off the page I love doing this but I don't do it very often because it is a bit tricky and technically they should all be on one side so some of them should be this side so I'm not doing that I'm not following uh, the rules of art, I'm following the rules of nothing, of Zentangle, of doing my own thing. Where my light source is not all from the same place, it seems to be coming from all around. Alright, so I've gone all the way around with a very, very light, very, very light bit of pencil. I'm going to take my tiny blending stump and I'm just going to come up here and I'm just going to blend that out. See how that get, creates that little shadow? I'm going to zoom back out so I don't accidentally go way off the page here. But you can see it now that it's blending. One more. There we go. See, I put those little shadows and now it looks like this whole thing is like floating because these guys are making shadows on the page. I like it. Okay, I need to name it. It is Bird, Bird's Border. Sign it. 
sign the whole thing right here. And I actually did it as a border all the way around my tile. There we go. Bird's border. I like it. There we go. Nice and close so you can see it. You guys have a good day. I will see you tomorrow. Do something nice for somebody else. Um, recognize the blessings in your life. And, um, yeah, just uh, have a spectacular day. And stay safe. There's a lot of weather out there today. I don't know about where you live, but I know where I live. There's a lot of weather, a lot of flash flood warnings, lots of, lots of uh, flooded roads. So be careful out there, folks. Bye-bye.